Hey guys and gals and welcome back to the next episode in the Minecraft Crafting Paradise Let's Play series. So I'm going to go ahead and start off this episode with kind of going over everything that I've been doing. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft lately off screen unfortunately. Uh, as I finally got one of my clients to not ram leak so it's been up for a few days and I've been just playing and tinkering. So you might notice that there's some very obvious and direct changes to the base. Uh, I'm gonna go over as much as I can if I can remember everything that I did since since that nothing major nothing super major but I have been playing and making improvements um, first of all I have started off with I made two more Emmy drives and removed all the chests from the base and dumped them into the Emmy system what you guys were already aware of that was going to happen so there is that uh, what the oh I suppose this probably has been going on. Uh, let me quickly just fix this. Ah, we'll just plug it up with an induction smelter. Uh, <laughs> for now. Okay, so let's see what else I've done. Uh, I've continued to make the ores and stuff and cook them and smelt them. I have done a little rearranging over here in our induction corner, you could say. Where we did all our uh, production stuff and whatnot. Uh, I did put down more, I made more crucibles and set down a big operation of crucibles. Uh, I made more blazing pyramethium. So this row right here has four blazing pyramethium under it. And you can see that it's producing lava at 0.7. Now these four over here are just flow. You can see that there, there's, there's flowing blazing pyramethium under there. Uh, as there's only four blazing pyramethium made. So these are producing a 0.5, but basically we're bringing over cobblestone through this pipe and depositing it inside of all of these crucibles producing lava. I am then pumping out all the lava into these two drums. They look blank, but if we were to just relog quickly, you will see that they'll turn red. Uh, for some reason they got uncolored and they haven't recolored. But basically, there we go. You'll see that they have red drums being produced producing lava into our singular ender tank that ender tank is now fueling everything in our in our base as you can see i made a bunch of lava generators all around uh, let's go ahead and do weather clear uh did i mess up here i think i did uh i'll have to bring that back i don't know why i broke that for what reason but you'll see that there's basically i, I did open up the nether fortress mm, again excuse me I did open up the nether fortress again to make, uh, get more blaze rods so I could make more, uh, ender tanks for our lava generators everywhere. You'll also see that I have made some small improvements to our mob grinder system. Uh, I'm to the point where now it can run 24 seven. Uh, I did, I took it up one step or I took it up too high and put a roof on it. And then I also put some glass in here so we could see in. But that's all I've done with the mob grinder. Oh, I did make other tracks too. I made the, um, I, I don't know if I did this. I don't think I did. I made the conveyor belt from extra utilities because they're much nicer. Uh, they're a little harder to make because you need tracks. So, uh, but we had some from when we were mining in the mine shaft, which I wish I would have grabbed more of because unfortunately I couldn't. Oh, excuse me. Unfortunately, I couldn't make enough of them, but they work really, really, really nicely. Because uh, if you look, mobs can actually spawn on them. If I hit F7, you can see that they actually allow mobs to spawn on them, which is a really nice feature. Oh, I accidentally full screen. Sorry about that. All right, so you'll see that I also put our, our, our Enderman spawner is now also using... Lava. Everything in our whole base is now powered by a lava generator with uh, transposable lava or wireless lava, whatever you want to call it. So now what I was deciding to do, I really wanted to do this and I didn't want to do it off camera because I wanted you guys to be here, is I'm going to do the active research, which is the mob grinder stuff. So basically we're going to work with Soul, Shard Re uh, Soul Shards Reborn, which is like the remake of the old soul shards mod if anyone remembers the old soul shard mod which was a great mod uh but it stopped being a, a a thing for a while so we'll have killing things is good for research very helpful blah 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 so place a piece of glowstone block down in the world Ugh, i can't stop yawning i apologize 
Place a glowstone block somewhere in the world. And then we need to take nether rack. The book says put nether, nether rack on the non-diagonal corners. And then take end stone on the other non-diagonal corner. Or on, on the diagonal corners. And then use a diamond on the middle part. Alright, so we'll use a diamond on the middle part. No? Alright, so surround the nether rack in, surround all the nether rack in the same way with the end stone. Oh, I have to Voila. So this is our, like our um our transformation grid you could say. Uh it's how it has to be. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering where I got the nether rack and end stone from. Well that's a good question. It's actually pretty simple. Uh I took a stone drum or a stone barrel and an ender tank and flow lava from the ender tank into the stone barrel. Now, if I take a piece of redstone and click it, the stone barrel with it, it'll actually produce a piece of netherrack. And then I can pop it out just like how you make obsidian with the water and the lava. Uh, you can do the same thing with, with uh, just clicking the lava with redstone makes netherrack. And then if I click it with glowstone you'll see that it turns into end stone. So that's a neat way to make it with the, with the axe and the, the hylum achelium mods. So, uh, yeah. So now we have an unbound soul shard. Pretty easy. Now we need an empty soul cage. Empty soul. Empty socket. Huh. Empty soul cage, which is just eight iron bars, which we can get from just some iron. Six iron will do. So I did, uh, if I did anything else, I apologize, guys. I, uh, all right, empty soul cage. I can't remember if I did anything else, but I believe that I didn't, uh, maybe a little base tidying and stuff, but I improved our power system, improved our mob spawner. Other than that, I can't really think of anything else I've done. So if I have, and I missed it, I, I apologize. Um, yeah, so, okay, so now we have both the items that we need for this. Uh, go ahead and claim reward. Okay, finally. Uh, let's see. So, finally, right-click that glowstone block in the corner with the diamond. Next thing you, thing you kill with the soul shard in your inventory will be bound to it. Place the bound soul, bound shard in the soul cage and slaughter all the things in the biome you choose to research. Having that soul shard in your inventory will increase the spawning... Having that soul shard in your inventory will increase the spawning power with every version of the bound mob you kill. You can also increase the mob spawner with the soul shard. And increase the mob count that way. Ah, so I think they've changed the mechanics ever so slightly since then. Alright, so we'll go ahead and claim this. This gives me a pig spawner, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and open up our reward bag for our savannah, which is garbage. But I do believe we got the taiga biome from this. Maybe we didn't. No, no we didn't. That's something else. Uh, that we'll probably work with maybe today or something else. I'm not sure. So I don't think we have a Savannah yet. No, we don't. I don't even know if you can get duplicates or not. I guess it's something we'll find out. Let's go ahead and kill a mob with a soul shard in our hand and just let's experiment with this a little bit. All right, let's get a let's get a. Mm, I guess we can't do it right here. Let's go into the pen. We'll have to let those skeletons. So the skeletons will go over here and they'll get ground up. Aha, uh -huh, you're all dying. Go on, get ground up. You know you want to. I think it's because I'm. they're aggroed to me. They're like skipping. All right, so we'll go into the, the, the pen here. Mm. 
Really? Was that really necessary? There was nothing there to detonate him. Alright. These are so much easier to walk off. Alright, so we were killed one skeleton. It's tier zero. Um... Good enough, I suppose. I'll have to grab new ones and bring them back to repair it, but... Uh, let's go ahead and put this pig spawner down. I don't know if I clicked that. I don't I don't know what we just did. Uh, so I clicked this, this pig spawner and bound to skeleton. And I absorbed the pig spawner. So I think that was... I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure what to do. I kind of wanted to see if it'll spawn mobs, because it should. And there's plenty, unless it needs redstone signal. Let's see, yep. The tiers are still the same, an active soul cage, inactive soul cage. So it's supposed to spawn. Spawn mobs. But it's not spawning anything. But it's active, it says. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it just had a really big delay on it. Alright, so let's go ahead and let it just... Yeah, it's spawning pretty good. Uh, so the problem with making more of those tracks is we need creosote oil, which means we'd need a cocoa oven, which isn't even that hard to make. We can make it. Alright, so we're going to really start pumping out a lot of mob essence and mob drops. As you can see here, we're getting a lot of clutter. Let's go ahead and just remove as much of this clutter as we can here. Alright, there we go. Get rid of that clutter. And so there we go. That's a that's a spawner. Pretty pretty easy. Um so here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's make a few more soul shards to have on us. Let's go and diamond. We'll need a few diamonds. Let's grab like, I don't know, five diamonds maybe. And then we'll grab some glowstone, which will need, what, 20, I think. Then we'll go ahead and do that. Pretty simple. We'll just have to go like this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. There we go. So now we have five unbound soul shards. And I don't know if we can get credit off of killing the ones that are spawned in there. Because you used to not be able to. But whether or not you can now, well, who knows. Ha! They got caught. Let's see, unbound, 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 unbound. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can actually use those. So let's go ahead and get out of here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and see if we can grab a... Wait, is the sun coming up? Ah, sun's coming up. Okay, so that's the end of that. But, uh, yeah, so we can't grind off of the... Or maybe we can and we just can't... Because it used to work where you couldn't farm... Uh, you can't farm kills on a, on a soul shard spawned mob. So, there's that. But they do give us essence, so we could technically 
get a, a safari net, capture one, and grind it with a with that way, with a few auto spawners. But uh, we can't actually grind it off the soul shards themselves, so. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's put this stuff away now. Uh, so we got all these soul shards, we can go screw around with that. I do want to kind of start messing around with a, uh, uh, the resonant flux capacitor though. I'd really like to start making the resonant flux, flux capacitor. So let's go ahead and look up the resonant flux capacitor and find out what we need to make first, which we need to make a leadstone flux capacitor. So we'll need a piece of sulfur, redstone, lead, and copper. Redstone, lead, lead, copper, lead, copper, redstone. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, and then a piece of sulfur. Should have a piece of sulfur in here. Yes, we do. All right. Hey, give me that back. That's a nice pick. I don't want to lose that. All right, so that's a leadstone one. All right, so now we need some invar tin and redstone. Invar tin and redstone. Ah, uh, tin, 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 invar tin. I don't think we have any invar. I think we'll have to make some. Which invar is ferrous and iron. We'll have to block this back up with another machine. Alright, so do we have an empty cable spot anywhere? Okay, we'll, put, we'll just put it right here. That's a magma crystal. Where did the induction... Am I crazy? Or is it... Okay, found it! I found it! Gimme! Ah, Gimme! Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and just put this right on top of that for now. Or apparently not, because apparently that doesn't work. Oh, that's right. We're not producing any power. All right, so we're going to go grab that. Because I was using it over here. we got to put this back on top so we can start putting lava into it so we can start generating us power again. Voila. And... It's probably filling up the other machines first. It has a weird priority system. Yeah, you can see here it's following, f filling up the redstone furnace first. Now it's giving the pulverizer a little power. Maybe it's giving this power to now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and throw in a stack of iron and a stack of ferrous. It should only be... Is that not invar? Pretty sure that's how you make invar. Iron and ferrous, yeah. That's how you make it. It's just not making it. Must have had a redstone set. Yeah, okay. So was, the redstone signal was, was screwing with it. All right, so that should that should we'll just let that make a bunch because we'll probably use some more later, anyways. So let's look at the resonant. Flux capacitor. Uh, okay. So we'll just make it out. We'll have to make it by hand, probably because of the middle piece. Piece of tin. There we go. There's our hardened. Now we need to make the... Two pieces of electrum and a diamond. I don't think we'll have electrum either, but that's pretty simple to make as well. Just uh, some gold and some silver. 
in an induction smelter. Ah, excuse me. There we go. It was like this, right, I believe? There we go. There's our resonance. Now we need a piece of blazing pyromethane with it. I'm pretty sure we actually have one somewhere. Yes, I guess we don't. I could have swore we had one spare blazing pyromethium laying around. Alright, so we'll have the redstone. We'll need to make a piece of blazing pyromethium, which is actually pretty simple. And pulverizer. Put that back up there. Then we'll need a piece, two pieces of redstone, two pieces of sulfur, two pieces blaze powder. All right. And two, 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 and two. Blazing pyromethium. We made our blazing. Pretty simple. I made an extra. So, whatever. Uh, and then we'll need some of that resonant endorium ingots, which is blaze powder, or blazing pyromethium and endorium blend, which is pretty simple. But we'll need our machines for it. Uh, how do we want to set this up? I think I'll just knock these down. Just for now. I can set it back up later. And we'll need our fluid transposer. Okay, and then we'll need our fluid transposer, our magma crucible. Magma crucible, fluid transposer. We'll need four ender pearls. So these are going to have to crucibleize. Uh, I think we went over our time limit, but it's okay. It's not giving it any power. Come on. It's going to crucibleize that. And then we're going to put a bucket in here for that. While that's going, I think we'll go ahead and get a... We need this pulverizer. We'll need a piece of shiny. 310. We'll we have to pulverize these. I I do need to what I we do need to get a better place for all this stuff. Uh, I do want to get a better place, location for all this crap. Like, get it all lined up in a nice spot. But, I don't know. Eventually, we'll make that base. I think I'm going to start delving towards... The, we have the ender pearls for it now. So, I think I'm going to start delving towards making uh, a base. But, we're going to do it the way I was talking about with the ender quarry. So. Okay, so that's almost done. One more, and then it should it should transpose it. There we go. So we have everything we need. We're just waiting for this to finish. That's almost done. There it goes. Transpose. There's our bucket. Pretty easy stuff. There we go. What, do we have to induction smelt it? I swear to God, I'm going to kill somebody. I've had to rip and tear down and swap these machines so many times already.
Is it really that slow? Oh my god. I'm going to kill somebody. Ah. Uh. Alright, so what's the, what are we going to get out of this? We're going to get uh, the Taiga and we're going to get the reward back. So I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Because you guys know I'm going to complete it. I mean, we're just moments away. So we're going to go ahead and end the episode. <clears throat> Thank you guys for watching as always. Uh, I'm going to murder somebody in their sleep. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you all for watching. As always, uh, please like and subscribe if you're you're enjoying the content or you just want to help see the channel grow. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, as always, again, once again, thank you for watching and supporting the channel. And until next time, you guys take her easy. Ho ho ho! We got an excellent reward: a power armor tinker table. That is awesome. And, ha! Huh, check that out, huh? That literally just gave us a reward into another reward. Two basics. Sacred Springs? That sounds good. Seasonal Forest. Alright, guys. Thank you for watching, and take it easy.